Good day everyone and welcome back to my virtual classroom for our science discoveries episode for today we will be learning empirical formula so let's get started our topic for today is about empirical formula when scientists began to investigate atomic behavior and chemical bonding, they performed experiments to discover how elements combined with one another. During their investigations, they noticed that each chemical compound contained elements in a fixed ratio by mass. They used these ratios to establish empirical formulas for compounds. For example, water has the empirical formula of H2O which represents the lowest whole number fixed ratio of hydrogen to oxygen, which is 2 is to 1. Now, what does your empirical formulas differ from formula units and molecular formulas? When we say empirical formulas, these are expressed as the smallest possible whole number ratios of the elements in compounds. The ratios of elements in empirical formulas are discovered through laboratory exper experimentations or investigations. The compounds such as C2H4O2, which is your acetic acid, if all the subscripts are reduced to the smallest ratio by dividing this by 2, you will have CH2O. This is the empirical formula of your acetic acid. Now, formula units, the formulas of ionic compound are all your formula units. These are almost always the same as your empirical formulas. For example, calcium chloride. This is both the empirical formula and the formula unit for calcium chloride. Now, let's proceed to molecular formulas. Molecular formulas show how many atoms of each element are in the molecules. You can clearly see the difference between compounds based on their molecular formulas, even if they have the same empirical formula. The molecular formulas of dinitrogen tetroxide, which is N2O4, and nitrogen dioxide, which is NO2, will share the same empirical formula, which is NO2. Now, what about percent composition? Using the ratio represented by the empirical formula, along with the molar mass of your compound, it is possible to determine the percent composition of each element of a compound. Now, let's work through an example. To begin, we have to find the number of atoms of each element in the empirical formula for ethanol. So, this is your structure for ethanol. You have two of your carbon, and you have your six of your hydrogen, and one oxygen. So, let me write that. Two of my carbon, six atoms of my hydrogen, and one oxygen. Okay, let me write that again. All right. Now, when we say percent composition, we use the molar mass of your compound. So since you have two of your carbon, this will be 12 times 2. That will be 24 grams. Six, of, six moles of your hydrogen. So that's 1 times 6. You have 6 grams. And oxygen is 1. So 16 times 1, you will have 16 grams. Now, if you add all of this, 24 plus 6 plus 16, you will get 46 grams. So, the mass of 1 mole of ethanol is 46 grams. So, to calculate the percent composition of each element in the compound, we have to divide the molar mass of each element by the molar mass of ethanol and multiply it by 100. So let me erase this structure and write it here. So for carbon, for percent carbon, it will be 24 divided by 46 times 100. That will be 52%. 52% of 
percent hydrogen will be 6 over 46 times 100 that will be 13 percent and the last one which is percent oxygen will be 16 divided by 46 times 100 will be 35 percent so this shows that the compound ethanol has 52 percent carbon 13 percent hydrogen and 35 percent oxygen Now, how do we determine the empirical formula? Chemists use experimental evidence to determine the identity of compounds they find in nature or produced in a chemical reaction. So this type of laboratory analysis allows the chemists to analyze the amount in grams of each element present in the compound, and this helps them determine the empirical formula for the compound. So how do we determine it? The first step is to check the composition. All right, check your composition of your compound to be to be sure each element is given in grams. If the composition is given in percentages, then you have to convert them in grams, assuming that is hundred grams sample. All right, because it's hundred percent in total, so that will be hundred grams per sample. The next step is to convert the amount of each element from grams to moles by using the molar mass value of your periodic table. So we use the conversion factor, one mole over the molar mass of your substance. The third step is you divide each of the mole values by the lowest mole value of all the elements. So the lowest mole value of all the elements to get a whole number mole ratio. The mole value are mole ratio, but an empirical formula subscript must be the lowest mole value whole number ratio between the elements. And after we have divided everything, if all values are not whole number, you must multiply them all with a certain value by a number that would make them whole. So for example, if you have 0.5, then you multiply it by 2. If you have 0.333, then you multiply it by 3 to make it a whole or, or anything that will make it a whole. And then you use this whole number as your subscript. Alright, so let's try one example. Let's erase everything here so that we will have enough space to determine an empirical formula. Now, for example, you are doing an experiment which results shows that a sample of a certain compound contains 69.58 grams of barium. Okay. You have 6.09 grams of carbon and 24.32 grams of oxygen. So what is the empirical formula of this compound? So when we do when we do an experiment, these are the results. So first is we have to check the units of the compound. So in this example, the composition of the three elements are in grams, 69.58, 6.09, 24.32. This is the unit needed to determine the empirical formula. The next one is we convert all of our grams to moles. So we start with barium, that will be 69.58 69 grams divided by the molar mass, which is 137.32 of your barium. That will give us 0 0.507 moles of our barium. The next one will be 6.09 of our carbon divided by 12.01 for carbon, that will be 0 0.507 moles of carbon. The next step is your 24.32 grams of your oxygen divided by 15.999 of your oxygen. That will give us 1.520 1 mole of oxygen. Then we have to calculate the whole number of your mole ratio. So since the smallest is barium, which is 0 
Then we divide everything by 0 0.507, 0 0.507, and 0 0.507 to get a whole number. So barium here will be 1, okay, 1 of your barium. Carbon will also be 1. And oxygen will be 2.998 oxygen, which we can round up to 3. All right. Then we determine the subscript. So we have 1 barium, 1 carbon, and 3 of our oxygen. So these are the ratios for each of your compound. Therefore, the empirical formula for this will be barium, carbon, oxygen, and 3. Subscript 3. All right. Now, empirical to molecular formula. So how do we do empirical to molecular formula? Now, the steps to convert from empirical to molecular, the first step would be, number one, is to calculate the molar mass of our empirical formula. In the same way, you could calculate the molar mass of a compound. And remember that these values are determined using the periodic table. Second step is to divide the molar mass or the molecular mass, not the molar mass, molecular mass, which is the actual mass, actual molar mass of your compound by the mass of the empirical formula, which is number one. Then you find the ratio. And then the last step will be you multiply the subscript, right? So let's try one example. Let me erase the steps here so that we have enough space to write our example. Let's say, for example, the empirical formula, empirical formula of glucose, which is C, H2O. So this is the empirical formula of glucose, right? The molar mass of the glucose molecule was determined as 180.16 grams per mole. So this one is the molar mass of the glucose molecule. Use this information to determine the molecular formula of glucose. So the first step is we will calculate the molar mass of our empirical formula. So that will be 1 times 12.01 for carbon, 2 times 1.01 for hydrogen, and 1 times 15.999 for our oxygen. Then we just need to add all of this, which is 30.03 grams of our empirical formula CH2O. After that, we will divide our molar mass of the molecule, which is 1880.16, by our empirical formula mass, which is 0 0.03 grams, and then we will get 5.999 that we can round up to 6. Since we have a 6, all we have to do is multiply our empirical formula by 6 on its subscript. Therefore, the molecular formula for glucose, multiplying this by 6, all right, so C here is 1 in empirical, so times 6, that's 6, two, H is 2, that means 6 times 2 is 12, and oxygen, which is 1, times 6 will be 6. Therefore, C6H12O6 is the molecular formula for glucose having an empirical formula of CH2O. Thank you and see you next episode. I hope that you have learned something new today and if you do, please don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell for your attendance today. And as always, as Teacher Mario would say, please do live your life to the fullest, learn something new every day, and love one another as how our God loves us. See you next episode for our Science Discovery Series. Bye!